Get Rich Education is brought to you by Ridge Lending Group, Apartment Investor Mastery, and Producers Wealth. You're listening to the show that has created more passive income for people than nearly any show in the world. This is the powerful Get Rich Education. Hey, you're inside Get Rich Education, episode 185. I'm your host, Keith Weinhold. What exactly makes a good turnkey real estate provider for you? That's the theme of our show today. We'll bring in a guest to discuss that shortly. But first, I want to talk to you about marketing of your property for prospective tenants and attracting prospective buyers because it is springtime and more properties are on the market, not just for rent, but for sale. And now look, I know that most real estate markets are really bustling in the United States and Canada and elsewhere right now, such that in some places, you could do nothing more or have your manager do nothing more than stick a for rent sign or a for sale sign in the yard, and you're probably still going to get some bites. But don't just stick a sign in the yard. Think about how that limits your pool of interested renters or buyers. And I know it sounds a little weird since seemingly everyone has been using the internet for about 20 years, but you'll still generally get a somewhat more sophisticated person that looks at online listings than that those who merely respond to a sign. One of the most important things that you can do before marketing your available property is to improve the appearance of the front of the property because that is curb appeal right here. It is said that people make up their minds about you as a person in seven seconds, okay? And first impressions matter with real estate too. Window shutters, a mowed lawn, a trimmed hedge, really simple landscaping improvements like some well-placed colorful plants or flowers or hanging flower baskets can really go a long way. If you can't paint the entire property and can only paint a little bit, just paint the front door. That is probably the number one place for eye appeal and curb appeal. Now, everything that I just mentioned right there can probably be done for under $500. And you know what else? These are all repeatable activities where it doesn't take any advanced skill set and they are outsourceable activities. So, and you probably know what I'm going to say, sooner than later, get out of doing those activities yourself and have your manager do that or have your manager manage the activity. Now, the property at this point then is also ready for photographs and a pretty good job can be done just with your iPhone these days. And by the way, the reason I'm bringing up this discussion about real estate marketing is because I've just seen some really bad examples of real estate photography lately. Photography is so important because, of course, most people are seeing your property online, not in person or from some sign in the yard. If someone is selling a multifamily building, Now, often those sellers don't even want to put a sign in the yard or a sign in the window that a property is for sale because that spooks the existing building's tenants and then it causes uncertainty with them. And if they're considering leaving, they might leave anyway. So what's going to make your prospective tenant or buyer pause when they're scrolling through the MLS or scrolling through Zillow or Craigslist or LoopNet? What makes them stop scrolling? is often good photography. Avoid taking head-on photos of the outside of a property. Head-on photos make the property look small. Take photos at about a 30-degree angle so that it shows both the front and one side of the house or building. You know, for some reason, amateur photographers seem to remember that with cars. People seem to instinctively know that a car photo looks best at a 30 degree angle from the front, but they sometimes forget this with homes. I don't know why that is. When you're composing a photo and you're kind of framing it up, don't show too much of the street down below and don't show too much of the sky up above. 
Of course, if an image is composed wrong when exposed, a lot of times you can crop it out later. Be sure that you use landscape orientation for most shots that you take, holding your phone or your camera sideways rather than portrait orientation, which is holding it vertically. Drone videos or photos, they're more important for larger properties. The larger an apartment complex is, the more a drone video will help. Now, inside the home, make sure it is well lit. That might be the number one thing. Turn on every light inside the unit before taking photos. I can't believe how often I see poorly lit interior photos, and it's just so easy to do it right. Even turn on the little range light that's over the kitchen oven. And this is all true whether you're doing showings or taking photos. In the bathroom, make sure that the toilet seat is down. Now, your property isn't going to be staged very often, especially for rentals, but some clutter can still be cleared pretty easily. So, you know, take the magnets off the fridge. Tenants want to be able to see themselves living in your property, and they can't do that with family photos on the nightstand or we went to Disneyland magnet photos on the fridge. Now, for years, iPhone has had a fairly decent native editor with their camera app. And for real estate photography, it is especially good for brightening dark photos. So whatever you do, just be familiar with your device's light settings inside its editor. I keep photos of my properties in Dropbox. Dropbox is so devastatingly simple to use, and your images are synchronized across all of your devices. So now that's pretty basic stuff right there. If you really want to go next level, now you're into doing things like using wide-angle camera lenses, often with an SLR, or even doing HDR photography. That stuff's up to you. But like I often say here, think about how your tenant is thinking, or your prospective tenant in this case, is thinking. Your renter or your property buyer, they want space and they want natural light. Keep that stuff in mind. And if your curb appeal touches and those few photographic tips are carried out right there, you're going to have a greater pool of prospective renters to choose from, so you will increase your chances of getting a better quality tenant or more rent income for your property. But besides the fact that it's spring, maybe photography is also on my mind because my father is a longtime professional photographer, so... Some of that stuff is just sort of baked into me, I think, and I'm going to be visiting my parents in upstate Pennsylvania in about two weeks. And yes, growing up in the late 80s and 90s, Dad had his photo equipment set up in our one living room, and when we had house guests come over, we sometimes concealed that stuff there, the makeshift studios of Kurt Weinhold Photography, and Dad's still doing that stuff too. And Dad has listened to all 185 episodes of Get Rich Education. And for that, I think I like him even more than what he's taught me about photography. But now today we're going to talk about some of the things I saw in my recent real estate field trip to Florida. Next week, Rich Dad tax advisor and wealth strategist Tom Wheelwright is going to be back on the show. And I'm going to ask him about my five ways that real estate investors get paid and see if he has some color to add to that, especially on the tax portion of your total rate of return from real estate. That ought to be awesome. Tom and I will obviously discuss much more too, but today it's Florida. Now, Jacksonville, Orlando, and Tampa Bay all have sub-markets where the numbers really work for real estate investors. And plus, people are just still moving to Florida in droves, the same as they have For decades, not only are people relocating to Florida for the warmth, but something you may not have known, Florida is the only income tax-free state east of the Mississippi River. Today's guest focuses on new construction turnkey property in Jacksonville. That's one big reason they have turnkey property inventory available right now, today. Rather than running out, they build new. Now, with these brand new construction properties, I think you're going to have less monthly cash flow when the property is occupied because there are higher price points since it's new construction. But since it's new construction, tenants want to keep living there when they're in there. So 
over the long term, you're likely to have less turnover. In fact, two to three year leases are common there. Of course, you might also project fewer maintenance costs because it is, in fact, new construction. But think about that low turnover rate now from the property manager's perspective. If the property manager doesn't have your tenant turning over very often, doesn't that mean that your manager is getting fewer lease renewal fees from you, the investor, when there are these long two to three year leases? So I'm going to ask today's turnkey provider guest about that. I'll also ask him about the price of the homes and the numbers and all of that. Let's meet today's guest. Today's guest is the founder and owner of the premier turnkey real estate provider in Jacksonville, Florida, JWB Real Estate Capital. They have 550 investor clients just like you residing in 43 states and 13 countries, and they've served them since 2006. In fact, a number of them are Get Rich Education listeners. They've renovated more than 2,000 properties. And, you know, plus, interestingly, for a turnkey provider, they give you a lot of new construction homes, too. In fact, they've now constructed more than 500 new construction turnkey income properties. And there really are a number of other things that make them different. They have a real culture in their office, which I was just inside a few weeks ago. They have more than 55 full-time employees. And after checking that out, uh, during lunch break, I sat down and even ate pizza with them during that lunch break last month. Their awards really are too many to tell you about here. But besides being featured in the Wall Street Journal and New York Times, Inc. Magazine recently named them as one of the best places to work. So it's a real pleasure to welcome back on to Get Rich Education, Greg Cohen. Thank you, Keith. Always a pleasure to be here. Well, Greg, it was great to have you host me there in your office. Yeah, your culture just feels different. In this big, wide open room where a lot of your employees are, you kind of have these large screen TV monitors overhead attached to the ceiling that sort of show a lot of up to date information, including the lease renewal status. Uh, I got to meet Melissa. She leads one of your teams. And it was really interesting to find out how you treat lease renewals as a sales job, basically, because you really want that tenant to renew. So just tell us a bit more about your culture and your philosophy in there. Yeah, absolutely. I'm so glad you got to be down here and experience what we're all about because when folks are thinking about building a portfolio of turnkey properties and, and building passive income, a lot of folks get focused on the property and the property and the pro it's all about the numbers of the property. And of course that's important. Sure. But what we all realize is it's actually the team behind the investment that is actually responsible for turning that whatever is on that fancy looking spreadsheet into real income in your bank account. And so we've always adopted this philosophy that it starts with our team. And our team is something that we invest a lot in. And over the years, our team has grown and grown and grown. It's a real source of our success is being able to attract top quality talent. And I just think the clients at the end of the day feel it when people enjoy where they go to work and who they work with. Clients feel it when they're on the phone and they meet you in person and people are smiling and we have fun at lunch together like we did. I mean, people just feel it. And what really happens is the big things get taken care of, but also the little things get picked up by other people on the team, picking up for their colleague, their teammate, and, and ultimately the clients at the end of the day really benefit. So that's a little bit about, about our philosophy. It's been 12 years now of building the team, and it's a pleasure to come to work every single day. We've talked at length on Get Rich Education about how the team is more important than the property. In fact, Greg, you're so proud of what you have there that you fly in all of your clients to visit, and you pay their expenses up to $1,000 so that they can get there and actually take a tour of your campus. Yeah, I mean, it seems pretty normal for us. It seems pretty natural, but I, in talking with other folks, other potential clients, and other turnkey companies across the country, it's, it's very unique in the space. But for us, it just makes sense. Our clients come to us. They expect us to be a big part of their overall portfolio. They have plans of acquiring sometimes five to dozens and 20, 30 properties. And that's a big part of their financial portfolio. So, you know, that face-to-face -face connection, getting to meet somebody, shake their hand is, is really important no matter what investment you make. We have a campus tour every single month and something similar to what you came down and got to be a part of, Keith. Yeah, that's absolutely right. 
you know, it's kind of like the property is the widget, but the team is what actually delivers your passive income. And it's hard to overstate the importance of that. But, of course, the property still matters. And interestingly, what you do there is you've done a lot of new construction turnkey property, and that's a bit atypical. So tell us more about why you're focusing on new construction. Yeah, absolutely. This is something that's unique as well. But what is, is pretty common for most investors out there, if they've been researching and talking to turnkey providers, is the common theme right now is that inventory is very scarce for turnkey providers. And we've been around long enough to know that this is kind of funny for us because when we started 12 years ago, first of all, there was no turnkey company at that point. Turnkey has kind of sprung up as a fashionable name over the last few years. Right. But we've been around for that long. We've got to see where when the, the crash happened, nobody wanted anything to do with, with real estate. It was hard to find clients that could really get what we were all about in this passive income stream. But the properties were plentiful. <laughs> there were more properties than we knew what to do with. And we had a good time buying all of those. And then it's funny now to see the tides turn. And, and obviously, this is something that's really sought after as an asset class. The problem for many turnkey providers out there is they don't have the inventory to meet demand. This is something that's happening across the country. It's happening in Jacksonville as well. We are seeing the same dynamics take place. But what other companies are having to do is to put people on waiting lists. So if you're a, a client and you're interested and you get excited and you know it's the right decision for you and you want to go ahead and buy that cash flowing property, a lot of times what you're met with is, okay, three or six months down the line, you can do this or many turnkey providers restrict the number of properties that clients can buy. And it's a result, again, of the fact that inventory is really scarce. But this isn't something that we have to be concerned with or our clients don't have to be concerned with. We always have 10 properties to 25 properties that are available that are already either newly built or renovated and that are ready for clients. And I know, Keith, that always surprised you when I would tell you that. You're like, I don't get it. You know, that just right. seems weird in, in the dynamic, right? Yes, when I first met you a while ago, that's the first thing I thought. Well, that's unusual that you actually have inventory. And I, actually, one of my early thoughts was, is there something wrong with it? I've since found out that there <laughs> isn't. You just had the foresight to buy. When things were sort of the opposite way that they are now, they used to be too much supply and not enough demand, and now we're kind of in the opposite environment. That's exactly right. And we have been big believers in the long term for this model forever since our investing career started many years ago. And we always had this vision that, what we're seeing right now would come to be because, listen, we're not rocket scientists. We just see how real estate cycles work and they tend to come back to the normal. And so what we did, we made a strategic decision many years ago to maximize what we could purchase and the amount of assets that we could purchase. The land specifically is what we focused on many years ago. And our philosophy was, listen, let's gobble up as much land as we possibly can that our resources will allow us to do. And we bought many more properties then we were going to sell that year. And we did this because we knew if we held the assets, and of course we have a, a history of building new construction properties, that's what the Wall Street Journal wrote about us for, we knew that if we had the assets and we knew how to build new construction, then what we're doing is really extending the runway and creating this inventory for clients that they're going to be able to invest in for many, many years. And it's going to put our clients in a great position. It's going to put our company in a great position. And so that's what we did. And so while we're facing the same challenges that other folks are facing in terms of renovated properties being available and, and how scarce that inventory is, we're seeing that as well. But what we're able to do is to build out the inventory that we purchased many years ago. And ultimately, that's the secret. That's why we have a lot of inventory available at all times for clients, whereas other providers are they're in a tough spot right now. Greg, I want to ask you about the benefits to the owners and the benefits to the residents when there's a new construction product. But before I do, first of all, I just want the listener to know that we're talking about typically infill projects. So in your mind's eye, when you're visualizing this new construction, this isn't some huge development where there are 60 or 80 new construction homes all in a row, a few of which are available. These are infill ones that are just sort of dotted around the Jacksonville MSA there. And Greg, since you do have an infill product there, do you ever have any trouble with appraisals? Because sometimes when you have an infill new construction and then you have older homes all around it, are they pulling comparables off the older homes? Does that give you trouble with appraisals for buyers? Well, and that's another thing that comes up in a lot of other markets, either because of what you just spoke about, how there might not be a lot of new construction in the neighborhood, yeah. or because it might mainly be a rental market. There might not be any what we'll call market comparables for other owner-occupants that are purchasing. You typically see that in either a, a no-growth market or a slow-growth type of a market, and it's pretty common for cash flow markets. But Jacksonville is a little bit different. 
as we know, we're in Florida, we're a coastal city. There's a lot of first time home buyers that are buying and there's a lot of owner occupants that are buying. So we certainly focus on neighborhoods where there is significant rental demand because that's the number one way to, to get the cash flow that we need. But at the same time, there are other properties that are being purchased that justify the sales prices. So we really don't have many appraisal issues at all. Of course, it's real estate and every once in a while one will come up. But overall, we really don't see those issues because there are other owner occupants that are purchasing and there are other new construction properties that are selling. So it's not that much of a concern for us. Now, when we think about purchasing a new construction product and we think about the benefits, okay, we think about us as an investor. All right, we do have a new construction place, so there probably is not going to be many repairs due or maintenance due for quite a while. But what are some of those other benefits of owning new construction that maybe we're not thinking about, benefits for both the owners and the residents? Yeah, well, from an owner's perspective, everyone who owns properties has probably felt the pain of turnover. And as the manager, as the property manager, which is what we do, we, of course, we have it all in-house and for JWB, our number one goal on the management side is how do we reduce maintenance costs and how do we reduce vacancy costs? And new construction properties really help us do that. Yeah. Because what we're able to do is to show a potential resident a brand new construction home. And Keith, I don't know about you, but when I was renting homes, I never had the opportunity to move into a brand new home. But if I did, I certainly would be interested in not only paying a premium for rent, but also signing a long-term lease. Sure. And that's what we really focus on. The name of the game here so that our clients can win is how long do we sign the lease and how many times do we get that resident to renew it? Because if we can keep long-term resident stays, it has a direct correlation on low maintenance and, of course, low vacancy costs. So new construction properties really help us do that. And, you know, there's some other benefits. The look of the homes are obviously visually appealing, although I try to downplay how good they look just because I don't think that's the most important part of the decision to buy a cash-flowing property. But they're built in this year, so they have one or two-car garages and open floor plans. Some of those things are certainly a benefit as well to the owner in the long run. So oftentimes it's about thinking about how your tenant is thinking. And yeah, I can think back to when I was a, a tenant before I ever owned property. Yeah, I would have loved to live in a new construction property. And if I could have and if I could have afforded it, I would have wanted to stay longer as well. We're talking about the importance of lease renewals here. You typically do two or even three year leases there in Jacksonville. And then beyond that, after the two-year or the three-year lease has expired for that tenant, yeah, I mentioned earlier how you basically have your people treat it like a sales job. You carefully market it to those tenants and sort of explain the benefits of staying in their property such that you can get that retention because that's what's best for investors when you don't have vacancy and turnover. Tell us more about how you do that. Yeah, absolutely. I thought it was really cool, Keith, as you were walking through. I remember as we were walking through the, the office, you stopped me when I started to say how much we care about lease renewal. Yeah. And you're like, wow, I've never really heard this from a management company before, right? That's right. I overheard you talking to a key employee about how it was going with the lease renewals. Yeah. And it's such an important part of the overall delivery of returns for clients, but many property management companies just don't pay attention to it. And there are a few reasons for that, but at the end of the day, if you don't give people a reason to leave, you know, people don't really like to move. <laughs> the problem and why people generally have signed one-year leases is because, number one, that's been what they've been told they should sign. And then number two, they've gotten poor service from their property manager. And they have been concerned about signing a long-term agreement if that property manager won't return their phone calls or if they have a maintenance issue that's not taken care of quickly and those sort of things. But for us, we're also owners of rental property. So we've footed the bill before and we know how important that long-term lease is and that long-term renewal is. And so we try to re-engineer our property management business to hit the desired outcome, which is long-term leases signed up front and multiple renewals over and over and over again. Because if we do that, of course, there's a good chance we're going to hit our return requirements. And so by doing that, we realized how important lease renewals were. And we break it down just like you mentioned, like any other sales floor would add sales opportunities and our property management team is compensated on how many lease renewals they sign and we're tracked and measured and we do all those wonderful things to number one, bring a lot of value to the resident, but also deliver a lot of value to the owners. And so being dedicated to this for many, many years, we've been able to put up really high renewal percentages. Last year, we re-signed over 70% of our leases that came up for renewal. All this boils down to long-term tenant stays. And by running the numbers now for many years, we see that if residents stay for a two-year period for an owner in their property, 
there's really a good chance we're going to overperform for our owners and hit their return requirements. We've got two and three-year leases that are signed up front, 70% renew at that point, and that, at the end of the day, is why we're able to be successful for clients. Every lease renewal puts thousands of dollars back in the pocket of that investor owner because they don't have to spend money on renovation costs to get the house back in great rental shape. They don't have any vacancy costs. They don't have any tenant placement fees to find a new resident, and that's why it's so important. You're listening to Get Rich Education. We're talking about Jacksonville turnkey real estate investing. More when we come back. I'm your host, Keith Weinhold. For an income property investor like you that needs an income property loan, go to Ridge Lending Group. And over the years, you've heard owner Chaley Ridge generously give her time to you right here on the show as a guest. Ridge provides investment property loans in almost every U.S. state. And you're going to find out how they've helped more Americans realize their dreams of financial freedom through real estate than any other mortgage lender in the entire nation when you get started at RidgeLendingGroup.com. MC Lobsher is the host of the top rated business and investing podcast, Cash Flow Ninja, and also the president of Producers Wealth. Producers Wealth assists people in creating, protecting, and perpetually multiplying wealth in any economy through creating processes that help them increase their production, provide them with liquidity, passive income generators, and opportunities for enormous growth. Learn more about their time-tested and proven systems at yourownbankingsystem.com. Hey, this is Dr. Buck Joffrey, host of Wealth Formula Podcast. You are listening to the powerful Get Rich Education with Keith Weinhold. Don't quit your daydream. Welcome back to Get Rich Education with our guest, Greg Cohen. We're talking about Jacksonville turnkey real estate investing. And the fact that two to three year leases are common there with Jacksonville renters for these homes. Now, Greg, some people might say that, well, wait a second. Now, isn't a turnkey company and a management company, and you do have both integrated into one, wouldn't they be concerned with turning the tenants over as fast as they can? Because that way, the management company, the turnkey company can get more lease renewal fees. Yeah, I mean, that's a really good point. A lot of people don't know this, but standard, what we'll call standalone property management companies actually count on a significant portion of their income coming from tenant placement fees. And of course, it is harder to sign a two and a three year lease than it is a one year lease. So that's one reason that standard standalone property management companies aren't excited about signing long term leases and one reason they don't. But the other thing that we all should realize is that even if they did, they would be sacrificing a lot of that that income. And a lease renewal fee for a a normal property management company is less than what they would earn for a tenant placement fee. We do focus on long-term leases, but we also realize by doing that, we are foregoing potential income that we could earn on the property management business. We're all probably wondering why I'm so excited about this, why Keith and I get to, you know, share this conversation. It's because we see the bigger picture. The bigger picture for a company like us is the majority of our income does not come from a tenant placement fee line item. The bigger income source for most turnkey companies out there are home sales. And so just like we talked about how we re-engineer the property management business to deliver the desired outcome of long-term tenant stays and overall hitting returns for clients, an extrapolation of that is, well, let's get the desired income for our company and for our clients as well as if we hit those return requirements by signing longer term leases and having clients pay less tenant placement fees, we're going to hit those returns. And by working with the clients that we do that want to build a big portfolio, many times they're going to come back to us over and over again and fulfill their portfolio and buy more houses with us and tell all their friends and their family. And that's how we all win as well. So that's a great way to show that it can be a win-win-win all the way around and why turnkey companies like JWB are really excited about signing long-term leases where that's very different than what the norm is for a standalone property management company. That's right. So by keeping existing clients happy and keeping them existing clients, you get them to buy more. You also get them to give referrals to their family and friends. And that way you can get more on the home sales, which is your main profit center. So again, it's about 
we're talking about a company that really thinks long term here. They think long term with something like that. They think long term over a number of years of buying up land way ahead of time and building new construction. And this is important because you, the investor, are going to have a long term relationship with your provider. So I like to deal with people that I can see are looking miles down the road here. Greg, you mentioned on rate of return. I want to ask you that in a moment, but just a real quick update on where we're at with pricing now in Jacksonville. Yeah, absolutely. So just to kind of calibrate everybody, the median home sales price in Jacksonville is about 220000 And so for pricing for the assets that we're talking about, our pricing is going to be roughly between one hundred sixty and 200000 So what we're really focusing are those neighborhoods that are middle income to below middle income, because that's the sweet spot there. And to give you just an average property, let's say it's a $180,000 property, that'll deliver about $1,350 in rent. When we run the numbers, that'll come out to between a 7 to 9% return on investment. Of course, we're not talking about property appreciation here. That's from all the benefits from the rental income side. Now, it's interesting. In real estate, there are so many ways one can calculate a return. So just walk us through how you calculate that 7 to 9% projected investor return. Absolutely. That's a great thing to talk about as well, because just like you mentioned, for every real estate investor out there, you somehow find that there's a different way to right. to analyze a, a return. We take the approach that we want to count everything. So just like Keith, I've listened to your podcasters for years now and, and read your materials on the different profit centers in owning rental properties, we're going to focus on all of them uh, with the exception of property appreciation. We're not going to focus on that. But specifically what we do when we calculate our returns is we're going to count everything, all the good and the bad, somehow Surprisingly, in talking with other turnkey companies, sometimes they forget to include things like closing costs or maintenance costs, vacancy costs, or tenant placement fees in their evaluations. But that doesn't make any sense to me. These are items that are absolutely going to happen in the investment, and they're going to affect the bottom line. And we at JWB, we want to be held accountable to everything, especially the return estimates that we put in front of clients at the time of purchase. The way that we get to 7 to 9%, you take your gross rental income, subtract out your principal and your interest payments. We are assuming that this is a financed property with financing in place. Right. So again, take your gross rental income, take out your principal and your interest payments, your property taxes, your property insurance costs, your property management fees, and your maintenance and your vacancy costs. Then what we're going to do is we're going to factor in the benefits of owning rental properties, such as the tax savings and the principal pay down, and we're going to add that back in. We're going to take that net amount, and then we divide that by your initial investment, which of course does include your closing costs, and that's how you get to 7 to 9%. Okay, and so you're not including any appreciation in there, and, of course, real estate typically appreciates over time, or I think maybe one could even make a counterargument. Actually, it's in, inflation leads to a higher price, but in any case, either whatever you want to call it, inflation or appreciation, you're looking for an asset that costs more as denominated in dollars. How does that appreciation rate look just kind of over the long term in Jacksonville? Well, and that's the way we should be looking at appreciation rates. It's over the long haul. People are made to be fools when they look in, in short increments. But the great thing about real estate is if you look over the long haul, it tends to repeat itself. It tends to, to work in cycles. It might be 10-year or 20-year cycles, but generally things come back to the norm. So we obviously have been tracking the Jacksonville market for multiple cycles now. We uh, go back to 1978, you'll see that the historical appreciation rate in Jacksonville is 3.8%, which is an interesting number to take into account because if you look across the U.S. during that same time span, it's roughly 3.2%. So that means that Jacksonville's market has actually appreciated more than the national average, which is why Jacksonville is known as a growth market. That is one thing that appeals to clients who want cash flow, but also be in a, a growth market, one that has potential for appreciation. So, and then that 3.2% number across the entire country, keep in mind as well, that's made up of markets that you're never going to be able to get cash flow in. Markets like California and New York have, that have appreciated a tremendous amount, but you can't get positive cash flow in. And that 3.2% number is also made up of what we'll call the traditional cash flowing markets, which are typically no growth or slow growth type of market. So all of that goes into that 3.2% average across the entire country. And again, Jacksonville's has come out to be 3.8%. So all of these numbers boil down to the fact that clients love coming to Jacksonville because you don't have to give up on the hope of appreciation long-term. And many times people love cash flow, but they feel like they're just kind of set in at a certain price and they're probably not going to get much growth over the long haul. And that's a lot to give up when you put the numbers to it. 
Now, interestingly, an investor, when they buy a property, yes, they buy it in a market, but even more so, they buy it in a certain neighborhood. Now, it might be difficult to get data on this, but to the neighborhoods that you buy in, is their appreciation rate approximately commensurate with the Jacksonville MSA appreciation rate? It's interesting to answer that question. I, I'm going to kind of tone down my answer a little bit because if looked over the last few years, we've had a nice run, specifically in, in our neighborhoods and right alongside with Jacksonville's as well. So I don't want to throw numbers out there because it'll make it look very rosy. What I really prefer to do is to just look long term. And that's what I do with my own assets. And the neighborhoods that we are putting our clients in are those neighborhoods that are surrounded by jobs. There's four neighborhoods that we put our clients in in Jacksonville, and they all happen to be located near downtown area, which is uh, an area that we want to be sort of surrounding. And we go into this and we say, listen, it's not this investment is going to stand on its own just by the, the returns, that 7 to 9 percent that we're talking about. But we're certainly going to put folks in an area where it's going to, it should be in line with what Jacksonville's long-term appreciation rate has been or potentially higher. And if you look over the 12 years that we've been in business and the clients that we've served, that has certainly been the case, and that's what we expect going forward. What do you think uh, the dynamics mean about future cash flows in Jacksonville and across the country and comparing those two? How do you think that looks for the future? Well, this is another really important and timely topic that we're chatting about with our current clients that are expanding their portfolios. It's, it's the fact that as you look at the dynamics with prices going up, one of the best things that's ever happened to us is the fact that prices and rents are not directly correlated. Right. And that's the reason why we have this cash flow opportunity. We've had it for so many years now since the market crashed. It's because when the market did crash and prices went way down, rent stayed consistent. And it created this cash flow opportunity for all of us. Well, those same dynamics are going to come back into play now. And as you're seeing pricing go up, rents are still going to stay consistent. So what that means is that as prices go up, as interest rates go up, which we all know are, are coming and are starting to happen now, and other things like property taxes, when prices go up, one of the first things that municipalities do is raise the tax base. It's an easy way for them to increase their tax base. So all of these things affect cash flow and they compress cash flow. So this is a, an important topic that we're talking about with our clients right now. It's the fact that their money will probably go farther today than it will in one, two years, three years from now. When you look at the potential cash flows today, they're great. And making that same decision one, two, three years from now, probably going to be a little bit lower on the cash flows than what they are today for the same asset, just because of the dynamics that we've just been talking about there. Well, Greg, just any final thoughts about purchasing turnkey income single family homes in Jacksonville today? Well, you know, I think we've done a great job covering a lot of the important ones here today. It's, I just think when folks are thinking about building this portfolio, whether this is their first time or whether they're thinking about going from their third property to their fourth, fifth, or sixth, it's important to understand about timing. And many people are so excited about this model right now, and they tend to believe that what you see for cash flows and what you see for returns today is going to be that way for the next 10 years. That's just how we think. But when you have the, the benefit of being around for a while, you realize that that's probably not the case. So we need to kind of think about the big picture here, think about the timing of how we're going to build a portfolio because operating in a vacuum where returns and pricing and interest rates are constant just isn't reality. And these are some of the things we love to sit down with clients and talk about and help them build the most efficient portfolio to help them get to their cash flow goals. Yeah, people have been anticipating that interest rates were going to be higher for quite a while now. A lot of people thought five years ago interest rates would be substantially higher and uh, I don't know that I've seen economists be more wrong over the long term on anything about <laughs> right. guessing interest rates because uh, really they've only begun a climb lately. So it's probably going to be more of a benefit to you to buy sooner rather than later. And if you buy sooner, I just often think that what you've done is you've just given yourself options. You've locked up a property and now you've given yourself options for a few years down the road. If you want to refinance for cash out or for rates, should they dip again or for term or whatever. And Greg, what does your inventory look like now with both new construction and with existing construction? Yeah, like I mentioned, we focus on new construction. At any point in time, that makes up about 75% of our inventory. So for new clients and existing clients looking to add, most of the time they're going to be adding new construction properties. And we always have between 10 to 25 properties that are made available for clients and, again, ready for purchase, ready to become cash flow and assets as soon as they close on the property. So that's what we've been doing for years now. I, I sound a little bit redundant for some of the folks that have heard me speak for many years now. We've always talked about having inventory and just looking at the amount of land and the amount of new builds that we have going on this year. 
that's the way it's going to be for us for the long haul. Yeah, if you think about what a turnkey provider is in business doing, ideally they don't ever want to run out of inventory and you just won't let that happen. So what's the best way for someone to get more information about you and your properties? There's a new construction passive income information kit that I've written, and it's available for all of our Get Rich listeners. You might have to help me on the website. Is it getricheducation.com slash Jacksonville? That's it. Getricheducation.com slash Jacksonville is where you can go to get that information kit. Absolutely. We'll include two property evaluations so you can see and be familiar with the type of assets that we're talking about, including all the numbers, and a great way for your listeners to get familiar with what we do. Yeah, that's a great package that you have for them over there. So you get the new construction rental properties information kit. And then secondly, you get two property evaluations looking exactly at the numbers of a couple typical properties that they offer in Jacksonville. Again, that's at GetRichEducation.com slash Jacksonville. Greg Cohen, thanks real much for coming back on to Get Rich Education. Thanks, Keith. I think investors are most excited about the team there in Jacksonville. I sure enjoyed my visit. Now that tax season is over, Tom Wheelwright will be back on the show yet again with us next week. If you're interested in brand new construction turnkey property in Jacksonville, Florida, get started with those great reports that we discussed and then look at some properties from there. Get started at GetRichEducation.com slash Jacksonville. Don't quit your daydream. Nothing on this show should be considered specific, personal, or professional advice. Please consult an appropriate tax, legal, real estate, financial, or business professional for individualized advice. Opinions of guests are their own. Information is not guaranteed. All investment strategies have the potential for profit or loss. The host is operating on behalf of Get Rich Education, LLC, exclusively. If you want to retire in five years or less through real estate investing, then pay close attention as I'm about to share my proven recipe with you. This is Brad Sumrock, and I've taught thousands of people just like you how to replace their incomes, quit their jobs, or simply have more income and freedom than they ever thought possible. And we do this by investing in apartment buildings. After starting with no experience, I managed to pocket over a million dollars in cash and retire from my 17-year corporate job after only three years of apartment investing. And I have hundreds of successful students that have had similar results. If you want to get out of the rat race or simply have more income and freedom in your life, then investing in apartment buildings might be the answer for you. Visit our website at bradsumrock.com to get more information about our upcoming training events. That's B-R-A-D-S-U-M-R-O-K.com. The preceding program was brought to you by your home for wealth building, GetRichEducation.com.